everyone, welcome back to Strange Cast Play One vs. Was Life is Strange podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adam. My host, Adam is here. Adam, you here? I'm here. I'm drinking out of an unnamed thermos, and it's <laughs> the coffee, and it's good. I won't name the company. Yeah, you let you lesson there. If that thermos company wants to get in touch for adverts, you can get in touch with us. Uh, Conversation Adnan starts. Beats me with a belt constantly to make sure that I I stay in line. Uh, please help. I'm blinking twice. <laughs> he, he comes all the way from England <laughs> just to put me in line. Oh dear. Yeah, we've uh, we've had a bit of a fiery start to this before we recorded, and I think yeah. we've actually made a topic for the next episode, which I think people will enjoy. So, yeah, yeah, it's kind of manifested. But either way, we're here for this one. A lot of stuff to be said as well, and I think most people will know that Steph's story will take a big priority of this episode yes. because. We finally got to that. There's a lot to be said about that as well. Um, so, but before we start as well, the uh, episode, as always, do please consider dropping us a subscribe, turn on notifications, uh, like, and comment on the video. Helps you keep up to date with our content, helps you support our content, helps you support the channel. Um, also nice to see a lot of people commenting on recent videos as well. It like, lets us know, gives us, it gives me different perspectives, if anything, and also Adam as well, like in terms of how people are talking, and what, what, how you feel about things. So I uh, truly appreciate that. And obviously Strangecast is available on all podcast services. So we're available on Spotify with video version, Apple podcasts, Amazon, Amazon podcasts, everything. So you can go and check us out on there and you can follow us on there. We've got over a hundred followers on Spotify now, which is a uh, really great to see as well. And we keep getting a massive uptick in views on podcasts. So I uh, really do appreciate that. And hopefully I'm hoping to rebrand stuff in the future, including the logo and stuff. So uh, do stay tuned with that. Um, before we start our main topic, which is obviously going to be Steph's story, as we, uh, <laughs> we've we talked about for a while, I kind of like left it on, on hold. I just finished listening to it before um, we came on. We got a couple of pieces of news that we're going to tackle. We actually got news, which is nice as well. So um, I think we'll kick this off quite simple, Adam, with an easy one, which is that like, Life is Strange Shoe Colors has won at the Peabody Awards. Uh, we covered this recently. So I'm going to go to Game Industry Biz with the article, which they put Life is Strange True Colors was among the winners in the new interactive and immersive narrative category at the Peabody Awards, which recognized excellence in storytelling. The 83rd Peabody Awards took place yesterday, which would have been uh, May 9th, with Deck Nine and Square Enix's title recognized for, quote unquote, showcasing both empathy as a superpower and the power of games mm. as a medium for emotionally resonant storytelling, end quote. Mm. Uh, the Peabody Awards also highlighted Lucy and the Wolves in Lucy and the Wolves in the Walls, a VR title from Fable Studios, quote unquote, for the for its sweet insistence that all is not as it seems in the world, that true and belief, that trust and belief transcend age, that neither adults nor children have cornered the market on on truth, and for its innovation innovation to be curious every corner end quote jesus christ that was a mouthful but anyway as we continue reporters without borders is the uncensored library a collection of censored articles being made available within minecraft for people who might not be able to access them otherwise was also given an award okay i'm gonna stop there because there's like a lot of other awards i think the main kind of gist that we wanted to get was that life is strange true colors has won the peabody awards yeah um that was kind of good as well because like True Colors had a re really a bit of a rough time at the BAFTAs, at the Game Industry Award. Um, yeah. Game Industry is what's it called now. Uh, Jeff Keighley's thing is like. Oh, uh, Summer well, Game Awards. Uh, uh, the Game Awards, sorry. The Game Awards. Yes, just the Game, the game Awards. Yeah. yeah, the Game Awards. Yeah, I completely blanked that. Really. Yeah, the Game yeah. Awards kind of like had a rough ride in there. Um, we saw like a lot of the, you know, Erica Murray kind of like missed out on big awards, which I think she should have won, personally speaking. But Oh, yeah. Um, and then just generally as well, Deck Nine had a bit of a it was it was a tough crowd essentially uh, for Life is Strange competing in a lot of the categories mm -hmm. and especially at any major ceremony. But this is kind of like a, at least it's uh, to be in this as well in the Peabody Award. Um, it's kind of nice for them to pick that up, and it's like it's quite interesting because obviously we spoke about it on the it was maybe two episodes before where it's like this kind of immerses different things. So it's not just video games; it's like all kinds of different mediums that can kind of challenge for this award. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of nice to see that Deck Nine has one ultimately in this category yeah no it's good um i i do like the line that's saying um showcasing both empathy as a superpower and the power of games as a medium for emotional resonance storytelling i do like how they put that empathy as a superpower you know i and i think yeah. that's why it won because you know there's not a lot of games that say like uh being empathetic towards others is a superpower maybe you should use mm -hmm. that too 
Um, the moral of true colors is uh, play it safe and you'll succeed. No. Um, <laughs> but it, I, I think it comes into just making sure you, you're there for people, being empathetic. And I think that's what Peabody saw. So, you know, good on them. They, they won a prestigious award. And um, nothing more I could say. Like, I, I wish I could win a Peabody award, but, you know, probably won't have in my lifetime. But c- congratulations to the Tech 9 team. Yeah, congratulations to them. It's deserved as well. Like, irrespective of how I feel about True Colors, like, it's still, it's nice to see that Deck 9 has got recognition for what it worked hard on. So kudos to Deck 9 for mm-hmm. winning that award. So let's move into a next piece of news, which is uh, going to the other Life is Strange developer or previous Life is Strange developer if they're ever working on again, which is obviously no other than Don't Nod. Um, I think this came out just after we actually posted the episode, uh, coincidentally. So we're now covering it. Which is that uh, going to Eurogamers was on the fourth of May. They put Don't Not announces release date of Harmony: The Fall of Riviera. So I they love put that don't... subtext too. Yeah, it's just like life <laughs> yeah. is still pretty strange. Don't worry, there's we're still gonna talk to them as they're the, the Life is Strange producers. And it's like they they're trying to move on. Like <laughs> they're trying. Yeah, trying. as as you'll see in the first sentence, Don't Not French developer behind Life is Strange has announced the release date of its forthcoming narrative adventure Harmony: The Fall of Riviera. The game is set for release on 8th of June across PC and Switch with a PlayStation 5 and Xbox release falling on the 22nd of June. A demo of the, for the game will also be available on Steam until the 21st of May if you're keen to try it out. There's also a trailer there for it as well. Um, just put in perspective who wrote this again. Uh, Ed Nightingale. He put here, um, I, um, I've been able to play the demo ahead of, its, um, of the game's release. So allow me to fill you in on how it plays. Players take um, the role of Polly, a young woman who returns to her hometown after her mother goes missing to investigate her disappearance. Soon after, she's transported into the alternative world of Riviera and greeted by the aspirations, quote unquote, respirations of the fallible, fallible? Mm. (laughs) fallible, mullable human psyche. Oh God, much of that, end quote. Um, Here she takes the role of Harmony. Uh, what follows is the what follows is a parallel narrative between the real world and the world of Rivier, with Polly's actions in one world having consequences for the other. This all plays out as a choice-based visual novel with some uh, with some colorful characters, colorful character art of its. Oh, sorry, I messed that up. With some colorful character art of its diverse and queer cast, a uh, Celeste and uh, Cherry Cherryo Chicory. Chicory, Chicory composer, Chicory, Lena Chicory. Rain. Let's go, Lena <laughs> Rain, bro. Uh, Lena Rain is one of the most talented musicians to ever walk this planet. I'm just telling you right now. If you haven't listened to Lena's uh, stuff, go on Spotify. Go listen to the Celeste um, compositions. You will not be disappointed. Lena Rain, just like God's gift to Earth. <laughs> I think personally. Personally, you should reach out to her after the game comes out, and you should invite her on Strange Cast, bro. I can't. I think I should like. <laughs> I think you should. Uh, I'm really, I'm really that scene in your head personally, but uh, yeah, but that's a. Uh, I would that love to. I, like, think... I would love to have Lena Rain on here. Like, like. I think you should. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I, I will. think you should. Who I, 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 I've. Uh, I think. Uh, I think this is equally as much as my podcast as it's your podcast. So I think. Uh, yeah. The uh, the invitation is always there for you to. Uh, Pick on people to bring on, and I think this would be a <laughs> this oh, yeah. would be a dream. Um, but either way, um, so where are we at to now? Lena Rain provides a score, um, evocative atmos- atmospheres, and wishful, mysterious melodies. Uh, what sets the game apart, though, is how it get how it gamify gamifies yeah how it gamifies conversations. Polly, you see, is an empath with a power of foresight, meaning she can see the outcome of conversations in advance this takes the form of a branching chart called the augural filled with possibilities um this just uh this doesn't just outlay conversational consequences but consists of varying nodes for instance lock nodes must be unlocked with key nodes through gaining specific pieces of information inevitable nodes must be completed to further the story time nodes only lift after others are complete and re- relative relative revelatory nodes revelatory nodes opens up the path opens up new paths among others um okay there's a lot here i'm not gonna keep going on there yeah. it's like a full breakdown but obviously like we got a release date for harmony we've spoken about harmony before this is one of the don't nod games that's coming out this year obviously now in the summer window as we know 
Um, and then hopefully, I believe Banishes will come out later this year. I'm still a little bit 50 50 mm-hmm. on that coming out yet, but that's the uh, that's the game that's going to be published with Focus. And this one is self independent. We have six games in development in the pipeline of Don't Nod as yes. part of their release windows, and all those are self published. And this is one of them as well. So this is a big kind of like opening point for Don't Nod. Um, at the same time, when they announced this, we saw a lot of previews drop from the gaming press. There was like a lot of previews being released. Don't nod. Where was I? Invite. Happily would have yeah. done that. We give you, come on, guys, come on. Like, just. Come on. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh. I'm joking. But I'm joking. But obviously, as we've always said, we are here. If you do want, if you do want us to get involved in that, so like you know, as you will. Um, but no, as there was a lot of previews, so I started reading around it. And yeah, this game's coming out now next month, which is uh, quite exciting. This is the first Don't Nod game that will be officially released since Twin Mirror, which was in 2020. Yeah. Um, That's so wild. Quite, uh, yeah. The big, big, yeah. big, big, long process, isn't it? It's kind of like get redeveloped. Um, it's kind of like shape the company going forward as they are doing. So it's the first test, I think. Like, and I think they'll be hoping there's, there's a steady sales, if anything. I think that's the kind of hope I think they have at this point. Yeah, no, um, I'm surprised to see that um, the release dates are so, like, far apart. That Like, June 8th, well, not so far apart, it's still in the same month. Uh, June 8th, PC and Switch, and PS5 and Xbox releasing the 22nd of June. So it's like, it's not even like an exclusivity deal. It, it's such a, such a weird, why not just release them all at once at June 22nd, you know? Like it's just weird, I, weird placement. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably gonna get it on Switch I, anyway. Like to be honest with you, but it's, mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's a little weird. It's like you're in the same month. It's not even like June 8th and then PS5 and Xbox being in like August. You know, like I I would be like okay, there's just like a little bit, but it's like a couple weeks. That's just weird. Yeah, that is- I don't know. The, there's got to be something coming out nearby and I have a funny feeling Final Fantasy comes out near that. Oh, mm, wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. So the <laughs> this drops on PlayStation Xbox as the same day as Final Fantasy 16 comes out. <laughs> wow. Do they hate? Do they hate? Do they hate Don't Nod? Does Square Enix hate Don't Nod? Find out here. Um, yeah, well, no, the Square... It's... Remember, Square Square got that release date out ages ago. I'm surprised they're dropping it on the 22nd there. I thought they yeah, might have like, moved it a bit I'm, I'm surprised that Square Enix allowed that. Like the same day. <laughs> Why not? Like that's the thing. Why not release it on Xbox then uh, and PS5 on June 8th? Like why did you? It's such a weird release date. Like it's yeah. so weird. Like am I right? That's like two weeks apart. Am I? If I'm right? Yeah, because so June because because two weeks apart that as well. Yeah, because that's yeah. that is a bit strange. That I, I don't get. That. Like, why, like, why, 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 why? Like, I I imagine that they're probably thinking is that they expect it to sell more on PC and Switch because I think that obviously mm-hmm. it's a visual novel, isn't it? It's not like a um you know a super massive action game that they can go and get sales from. And I think the Xbox PlayStation clientele is like I think less kind of like appealing in terms of the kind of audience they're targeting with this game. Um, yeah, because like in itself, what I find really this is the more interesting part for me. If anything else is that Don't Nod here isn't releasing on the last gen consoles. Like everything yes. else I've been playing on has been released on Xbox um, One, has been released on PlayStation Four. They're just not gone for it, and I'm really surprised yeah. with this game. I thought they'd try and uh, maximize sales from it completely, but it seems like that's just not the case. It's like I'm quite surprised yeah. like that this is like restricted to where it's at. So. Um, I think that I think they're probably maybe their wishful thinking is like PC and Switch is the main sales that they're going to drive it off of, maybe. and then we'll come to PlayStation Xbox afterwards. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it, this isn't really an Xbox game. It is a PS5. It is a play, PlayStation crowd kind of game, but it's not really an Xbox crowd kind of game. But I'm going to get it on Switch on June 8th, so for sure, oh, very nice. I might actually pick yeah. up on PlayStation then, and we can do a review potentially. Oh, nice. Yeah, essentially, I think maybe maybe it's worth doing that, but I don't know. To be honest, Final Fantasy is coming out on the same day, so you might not see me for a couple of weeks. That's uh, true. <laughs> that's that. That's that. Um, so yeah, got Harmony and uh, keep an eye out for that as well. So it's definitely a one to in, one to keep out for. I just think it's, it's for me. It's like it's really interesting yeah. to see what it does because this is the first Don't Nod game in three years. Don't Nod in terms of they developing and publishing, not the 
other games they have published. So I think like it's now it's kind of like the first stepping stone for let's see what happens in the next five years or so rolling forward. Okay, so we'll move into our next piece of news, Adam, which is now we're moving to the Expanse a Telltale series. We'll receive new gameplay at the uh, Tribeca Festival. So this is a news report from Gaming Ball. They've put the Expanse a Telltale series sees the release of its first episode this summer. Um, a release date for well, the adverts just coming up. A release date for Deck Nine uh, for Telltale games and Deck Nine games will reveal. I can't even see the article. Like, there's an advert covering it. What a terrible website this is. Anyway, sorry. Back onto it. Um, Go for it. Basically, the developers will release new gameplay at the 22nd uh, annual Tribeca Festival, uh, which will be on the 10th of June at 4:30 p.m. ET. Sorry, I just can't read this article. It's so terrible the interface. Um, it also appears adjacent to the Tribeca, um, the digital Tribeca Festival game showcase on Jack 9th of June. The development team will also have an in-person panel on the 10th of June at 4.30 p.m. ET, as we said. Ticket holders can also go hands-on with it during the event, which is quite exciting. Uh, game director Stephen Frost said, shout out to Stephen Frost, uh, we are thrilled to be a Tribeca official selection. The Expanse, um, this, this is just, the article just keeps getting cut, cut off here. Uh, I can't read. That. I still, I still have quote? it. So, yeah, can yeah, you take so over? Game I'm sorry. Director... Like, I... Yeah, I got you. Uh, game director Stephen Stephen Frost said, "We are thrilled to be a Tribeca official selection. The Expanse is an exceptional work of fiction, and we at Deck Nine feel honored to have this con- uh, to have contributed contributed to this universe in the video game medium." Uh, Telltale CEO Jamie Ottley. Oddly, yeah, oddly, uh, added from the very start of development, our focus was. Oh, sorry. From the very start of the development, our focus for the expanse has been on the quality of the narrative and the opportunity to tell an incredible story filled with amazing characters that the player can participate in. Being named at a Tribeca Film Festival selection is the ultimate endorsement that we are on the right path and we are honored to be included. So. Uh yeah, yes. I I wholly agree with that because like it's not very often that Tribeca Film Festival, um, will it be at the Tribeca Film Festival, Tri- uh digital Tribeca Game Showcase? Okay, I was about to say like is it in the film festival or the game showcase? But it is clarified that it is at the game showcase. But even either, either way, Tribeca is still a uh like what Peabody was. It's a prestigious thing. Uh, you you get a lot of really um good movies coming out of the Tribeca films. Like you don't go into Tribeca with just like, oh, here I would like to be a part of it. And Tribeca's like, oh cool. No, Tribeca finds you and gets you in. Like you you don't just like walk into the doors there. So it is a great and honorable mention from Tribeca. So good on them. Uh, and um, I will see you there uh, in. in 50 years <laughs> um no yeah it's quite exciting this now like it seems to be like we're we're full we're full guns blazing towards a release for the first telltale game in in a long time and also like a, a deck nine game which is in collaboration with them as well um i, I still need I'm, I'm i need this might actually potentially be my next tv show i sit down and watch because i do want to kind of get invested in the expanse if i'm going to play this like i've always been a telltale fan and um oh, yeah. and i like deck nine obviously as well and it's like i just like to see what's going on because it's like it's long as well like i still got prime videos so i need to watch it actually if i've got them <laughs> and i can kind of sit down with it um but i'm excited to see what they do with this like it's, it seems to be like hopefully it's mm-hmm. like a spark and rebirth for telltale and like we're seeing little bits and it's like you know for me it's like nostalgia goggles come on and like i was telltale of like old it's got this kind of like vibe of it i'm kind of liking it um but excited nonetheless and obviously I know that um erica mori has done work on this which is cool um she's yeah. done a uh i think i think she did Camino drummers um mocap or she did hmm. or maybe maybe she did she did mocap nonetheless though for this which is quite cool um so yeah very excited to uh see this come out and hopefully maybe we get erica more back on so we can talk the expanse in the future but we'll see about that but yeah nonetheless looking forward to it it's that tribeca festival i only know tribeca because i covered it only a couple of years ago when i was in the gaming Ooh. press i believe kojima got an award there <laughs> yes, he did. So that's yeah. my yes, that's my Kojima that would be mention. At the, yeah, podcast Friday. No, that's a Saturday, June tenth, 
at 4 30 p.m eastern standard time so um tune into that and then the next day i know it's a saturday june 10th because sunday june 11th is the xbox showcase we're gonna see like it's as phil spencer put it uh besides saying that xbox is a bunch of losers before he said all that um he said it's the it's the one gamers have been waiting for you're gonna being an xbox fan on june 11th it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's gonna be we're gonna be winners this time well but the day before yeah, is tribeca <laughs> I hope um, I, ho I hope I hope the UK regular is sponsoring the Xbox Showcase because that'd be quite good. Yo, can you imagine? <laughs> it's just like, can you imagine on June 11th, just like the UK, like the EU comes on the stage, like we just wanted to announce at Xbox's Showcase that we're putting through the deal. You're gonna get Call what? of Duty on Game Pass. Did you not see the news this week that says that the EU is gonna approve the deal? Are they really? No, I didn't see. Yeah, that. so it's it's a. It's a report in Returas which says that the EU is looking ready to publish to to approve the deal, which is like a massive like if it actually goes wow. through this time. Like the other one was based. So here's a little bit of a mix up. Like the UK regulator, when when people thought it was going to go through, it was because um, the FT, the Financial Times, reported saying that through like analysts expect it to happen, and it didn't. But now the reports are happening like this week from Returas, which Returas is very like. Um, is a is a well sourced kind of organization anyway is now reporting that the that the EU regulator is going to approve the Activision Blizzard deal with Microsoft which is like holy cow complete yeah by the way um yeah. did you find it funny the tweet i sent you about the e uk regulator where it said where yeah. it's like put all these where restrictions said, like, in place like, including like, activision blizzard <laughs> can't buy microsoft like sure yeah go for it yeah it's, <laughs> it's like, it's like, so it's like Bo stupid. bobby kotek is gonna find 2.3 trillion dollars like you know it's about yeah. the second biggest company in the world in the world it's like yeah we'll just well i'll just i think i think i think, I think they might have done that because it's, there's some caveat or something with it like just to yeah. work out like if microsoft was going to do yeah. something like ridiculous for it but to be honest i i still expect the deal to go through that one i don't i think there's legal hurdles now but i still don't see much of a reason for it not to go through i think they'll so fight back the uk regulator just to remind everybody that um, the weekend is going to be nice because June 8th, you're going to get um, uh, Harmony. You're going to get June 8th on Harmony. You're going to get June 10th, which is uh, Tribeca with uh, the expanse. And on June 11th is Xbox. So, yeah, don't have plans that weekend. You're going to have a lot to <laughs> talk about. It's like, honestly, it's going to be a lot to talk about from that weekend. It's going to be um showcase bananas now as well because all the gaming uh, publishers are going to do their showcases. No, yes. e is yeah. E3 cancelled now officially? E3 is officially cancelled. Yeah, it's not coming back. It's never yeah, coming it's, back. It's dead. Look. It's dead. Uh, do you know it's what? I'm dead. surprised it lasted as long as it did. We were, we were, I was when I was covering Honestly. the press like seven, seven, nine years ago plus as well. Everyone was talking every year. It's like E3 is going to die. E3 is going to die. I was like, it's going to die, but something's going to happen. And then bang, COVID happened. I was like, that's the end of it. I was like, that yeah. is the end of it now. I was like, when I, I remember when COVID happened, I was like, E three is done. Yeah, no, it's it's over. Um, but hey, when I close thing, close things out with the last piece of news. Indeed, nice segue. Yeah. So, and a very exciting one, which is I don't know. If Twitter has tweeted on the 9th of May, which was today marks the four year anniversary of Life is Strange two episode three Wastelands. Two Wolf Brothers yeah. enter a new community, make new friends, and face choices. Um, obviously, we've talked about a lot about this, but yeah, episode three Wastelands was a very good episode. Very. Oh very. yeah. It's, it's part of the uh, it's it's the it's the series of three, isn't it? As you said, like <laughs> you look at every every Life is Strange game, the third episode has like been pretty strong. Um, as a, oh, yeah. as a, a the main the main series, if anything, um, but yeah, very very good episode. Followed followed after the absolutely wonderful episode two rule uh, rule. <laughs> I suppose, <laughs> Which, yeah. <laughs> shut up, you! It's a great episode that. Um, but no, I very I, I like that anniversary as well for it being four years. It feels mad it's been four years as well. I think because like yeah, four years, a couple, dude. holy cow, cu couple of yeah, a couple of months before that, I remember when I interviewed um, Sarah ahead of it, who was Cassidy. And I did that mm. for hardcore gamer, um, and she was she was really nice, and it was like um, that's like kind of like full experience of with Cassidy being in an episode, and I think she's like for me one of the truly memorable characters that the series has seen. Um, but no, really enjoyed that, that. That episode was strong though. That was a really strong episode. The entire thing was so great about it. 
like the entire set of like characters you had like a wonderful ca- wonderful cast of characters that kind of turned up at that campsite um where the story progressed at that point um and then just like kind of like that was like the truly um development stage for sean as well as like as a character as a person as everything and then even the uh very very uh nice ending as well for the episode uh mm. nice quote unquote yeah right 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 but yeah no um i i have a lot of respect for this episode even at my like worst takes for life change too i think uh episode three took the heart of what the series was doing and I, and I think it really expanded upon it. It really ended on a, a cliffhanger. It really was the climax of the series. So uh, of that season, I should say. And uh, no, I, I really have a lot of love for Wastelands. I think it really, um, really put things in perspective, what this game wanted to do. So I, I really liked episode three. Yeah, four years going strong, still holds up. Where does the time go? <laughs> Where does the time go? Bro, feel so I don't even fan. know anymore. I don't even know. Uh, I feel so old. Four years, right? But anyway, we are done with all the news topics. Hope you enjoyed that main topic time, Adam. So obviously, yes. this is our late review for Life is Strange Steph Story, the Life is Strange prose novel written by Rosie Four. Um, Adam read this, well listened to it read it to it like a while back he gave an early impressions yeah. and then i've now caught up to it um i've been basically i've basically spent the last 24 hours with kate events and eight hours of which she's occupied because i've been listening to the audiobook um through audible my first experience on audible as well i just don't really listen to audiobooks that much or read as much as yeah. i should have done as i should do um so it's quite nice to have it as well it's kind of like she's literally been like i can hear her voice like she's been like talking casually also i've been doing things like clean my room whatever else um so yeah, if you want, if you do want the novel as well, you can sign up to Audible. If you have like a Prime membership, you can get signed up to it. And it's free then, and you can get access to it. Because I was trying to look for it to buy out. And it's quite expensive on audiobook. And I was like, Jesus, I'm yeah. like, just a little bit, a little yeah. bit short on money this month. So it's like, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, buy, I'm gonna get this through Audible. So I've, I've got it downloaded on that, and I've just finished it before we came on this podcast. Um, so before we start, have you actually read the book, or you just listened to the audio? I just listened to the audio. Um, because I, I wanted to hear Katie Benz's uh, voice acting with all the characters and how she intentionally characterizes everybody. Um, so no, I only read the um, the or listened to the audio book, which I don't do often. Either. Yeah, I, I like to read. Yeah, yeah, I, I I like to if I can get a book that is nonfiction, obviously I'm more of a biography kind of person, or whatever. <laughs> I read them. It's like this was a um, this was like for me. I had to kind of be done through. Um, uh, a uh, uh, what I'm looking for now, um, an audio version. I, I was I was going to read the book. Like it's just not my kind of cup of tea, if anything, to read a, a mm-hmm. story like this. But um, nonetheless, yeah, obviously we start. It's like it's eight. It's eight and a half plus hours. I think it's like eight hours forty minutes or something. Um, the entire yeah. thing and about um, eight and a half. Hours, just to kidding. Yeah. Yeah, and just to give you a bit of context, obviously, if you've listened to the early impressions that Adam gave in one of the podcast episodes, Adam very much highlighted that Rosie Four uses the word falter quite a lot. So it's like, yes. I'm pretty much like already expecting this. And so basically, I downloaded it yesterday and went for a walk. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get a coffee. And 20 minutes in, the first time falter is mentioned, I had this massive smirk on my face. And then this woman yeah. has crossed the street, is looking at me. I look up at her, and she's probably like, Why is this guy smirking? And it's like, the minute Katie says it for the yeah. first time, falter, I was like, There it is. And it's like, it's like, there falter starts. here. Falter. The waterfall begins. Yeah. Falter. It's like the first first two hours, it's like, falter, 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 falter. And it's like, stops for four hours. And then, like, the last two hours, it was like, falter comes back. And obviously, I'm not taking a dig at Rosie for I'm not doing. It's just gonna, no. it's just funny that Adam has highlighted falter as a keyword because it's now popped up in my mind every time it's said in the in the mm. uh, Kate mentions it. I'm like, I can't stop like just smirking to my like, Adam like you just ruined this for me. But yeah, um, I, I, it's like falter, I, I, falter. And that's the thing. Like if, if you look at any of my art, any of my music, I have a style. Like there's gonna be things but, that like you can point out with like cast garden stuff, and you're like, well, yeah. you do this all the time. Like I'm not denying it i'm just saying it might it be is. her thing it might be yeah, her thing like I, I i like she i don't know much about rosie her. four yeah i don't know much about rosie four except for, like when i was like when when they announced the prose novel i looked her up and like kind of like uh, obviously she seems 
she seems lovely like and she's done panels mm-hmm. with katie and katie's spoken to her, met her and i've no kind of like judge, judgment on her at all i'd love to have her on this channel for example to speak to her um but yeah. like i don't know if she uses faultler in her other works maybe it's like kind of like her go-to word for it and it's just like it's just because it's like adam's meant like the worst part for me is like someone mentioned something to me it's like i'll just yeah. pick up on it and i can't stop seeing it but yeah it was, it was a it was a, a fault that was used quite a lot throughout of it and i was like okay oh, that's interesting um but it, it was an interesting like so for example the prose novel isn't something for me it's like 12 years too late for me of if anything like i'm yes. just not the target audience for it so i have to accept that for it to start with i'm just a a Life is Strange fan, and I've always said that I'm not even the biggest fan, if anything. I'm not, it's a Life is Strange fan who's listening to it. It's not the young adult um, novel that is targeted towards. So you have to accept that for what it is. And it's like, that's why I didn't really pass too much judgment on it, as I like kind of just listening to it and hearing what's said. Um, I think Katie Bentz is exceptional. I think mm-hmm. she's really exceptional. Like, because yeah. this is a different field. It's not just, you can't do the same kind of like VO acting that you're doing in. in life is strange uh before so much like oh i'm steph and i love this and i love that you can't do that it's like it has to be and i don't want to be disrespectful and i don't want to it, you have to have a narrator's voice it has to be like monotone for like a lot of it so it's like just mm-hmm. you speak and then it's like you you see occasionally she has that thing where she throws in her acting chops but it's like oh and it's like this and she does that kind of thing but it's like you have to do that at the right execution it's, it's pretty much otherwise a narrator's voice and not everyone has a narrator's voice either but with Katie, it's just mm-hmm. it just sounds very natural with her. And I think I think more so it helps because she is Steph Kingrich. So it's like that yes. helps kind of like accompany the experience for her. But generally speaking, I really just enjoyed listening to it. It's kind of it was just nice hearing Katie's voice again, like yeah, having like, spoken to her for many years. I, I said it before that usually if I listen to an audiobook, it's like I'll, I'll put it at like one point two speed, like just to like speed yeah. along because there is a narrator's voice. And I'm just like trying to get the information in that I just got the audiobook for. Um, but no, I, I was about to do 1.2, 1.25, but then I put it back to one because her cadence was so good in this book that I, I just, I didn't want to like speed it up. I wanted to hear that cadence that she had for each character and how she was reading the story. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that, cause I, I didn't even know you could do that. So obviously again, my first experience on audio podcast, um, or books and yeah. stuff like that. And I, I, I saw that you could increase the speed. I was like, yes. is this a thing? I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I and, yeah. and I had mine on one because I was like, I just naturally, as I said, Katie's voice flows just very normal. Nice. And she's got a very no, there's, yeah, she's got there's very definitely some audiobooks where I'm just like, eh, 1.4. <laughs> it's like well, it's yeah. speed. It's, it's, it's the subject as well. It's gonna be the subject that's it's the person who's narrating the subject, but it's like for me, this was just yeah. like it felt like Oh, she's gonna read me a bedtime yeah, story, Katie. Mostly... Like and that's the that's the ultimate compliment I can give it. Like it just felt very natural, like hearing someone's voice like that. Yeah, no, I was just like, I, I, I definitely turned it down to one because I was like, yeah, I, I want to hear her cadence on this. And it was it was very pleasant. It was a nice listen. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And and and, and like, I, I don't know. Do you want to delve into spoilers? Do you not want to delve into spoilers? How do you want to approach yeah, this? Yeah, let's, I think let's like... do spoilers. Let's do it. It's been long enough. If right. you haven't read or listened to the book, it's too late now. It's spoilers, yeah. now, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I think we we gave the early impressions to um yeah with Adam's reviews kind of let's see it, but this will have to be like it'll be a spoiler section now going forward with like what we talk about what we what we've seen. So uh, as I said, I found it really interesting. My favorite part was the the audio, but when I was listening to it, it's like she's just talking like she's doing a thing. With Katie, she's flowing, and then it's like twelve, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, yes, oh right, 12. actually, we're we're yeah, we're we're in the next uh, we're in the next segment or something. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's based off each um each um seasonal fall it goes from like uh uh spring <laughs> summer mm-hmm. how does it go now was it f- spring so it's um i don't know <laughs> i don't know right hold let on. me look it up we... yeah so it, uh, it goes into seasons audible. yeah audible and then it has different chapters different sections library if this just you know would like there to, it is i've got it nice i have it okay so oh. If I was listening on Audible, I had opening credits, dedication, the timeline, authors note that it's spring, which is five chapters in, in inside yes. it. Summer, which is, again, uh, which is four chapters. Then it's fall, which is three. Then it's winter, which is two. Then it's spring, which is three. Then it's summer, which is four. Then it's fall, which is three. Then it's winter, which is three, well, three, four, A lot. five, six, seven, eight. Then it's spring one, and there's end credits. So that there's like sub chapters that are inside of it. Um, 
so I was listening to that and sorry when I was like trying to like gauge out how many like which which <laughs> which um seasonal moments yeah. it goes through it was like when I got to fall it's like fall fall I'm not a fall person we're 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 from the UK we're not we're not weird like Adams Adams people autumn um, yes autumn autumn yes it is autumn yeah. um but yeah like in itself it was quite it was nicely structured it, it felt like it nicely paced itself um and what do you know what kind of like kind of kick things off if anything what makes me feel more disheartened about is it the fact that they just didn't capitalize on this like years ago uh square enix like they should have just done this like the minute life is strange one should have dropped they should have just got someone's commission a prose novel on like max yes. and chloe they could have like had a series of them so basically you could have like got to this end point here with true colors if this is like the end point and then you release them as like a series of books and you can release them as a series of audio books I think that this just this just showed me that when you had Katie doing the writing and you had Rosie for writing a book, it was like there was so much potential here. Like we got Can we got the Vincelli comic Hattel series. Hattel reading a, an audio book that would have been yeah. so nice. That would have been yeah. so fun I, I to said, listen to. They they could have made a lot of money off it just doing a, a digital like a, a, an audio novel, but doing off the comics and just getting them reading the lines. Do you know, like obviously sure. maybe Ashley Birch is a bit more expensive now, but like you know in terms of Rihanna De Vries I think, and Kylie I think Brown someone did and... tell me that they were listening to an audio book of a graphic novel, and I was like, what? <laughs> like it's what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all visual stuff. But like, I'm sorry, I'm seeing if Hannah Tell did read an audio book. Just to make sure. No, no she, she didn't. did not. She didn't. I just want to make sure because that that would be a pleasant listen. Like she oh just has God, a yeah. nice, like soft voice. So I'm just like, yeah, that would be so nice to listen to. But nope. yeah, she 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 would she would she would she, like it just would have been like a, like because I just think that there's so much they could have done it with each character. They could have done it with like all the main characters. If anything, again, like this as well. I think like this gives a lot of closure on Steph's story. If anything, like no pun intended, it's like Steph's like story is complete and the arc is complete. Um, this kind of reminds me a little bit of if you ever played final fantasy 15 and the kind of like yes. stuff square enix was doing where it had like all the supplements for final fantasy 15 like if you go into final fantasy 15 a little bit blindsided a lot of stuff doesn't doesn't make sense because when they were releasing right. final fantasy 15 square enix did so much stuff they did trailers they did like a, a standalone movie like you have so many dlcs for final fantasy. They, they i think their plan and ambition was to make final fantasy 15 like a mega universe if anything like it was it, it seemed to fit its way and that kind of has been the tone even with Final Fantasy 13 when they're trying to they're trying to make it into like the series where people like the Novella Crystallis series and people are kind of engulfed in it. And it's like this again with like Steph. It's like this is a big extra supplement that accommodates all the stuff you've seen in True Colors. It's not essential part of the game. So you don't need it for that anyway. It just kind of supplements mm. it, but it really fleshes out the entire relationship with Izzy, the um just Steph in itself, how she ends up in Haven. It makes you it draws you much more closer to Steph, if anything. Yes. Um and also again reiterates my reiterates my theory where I've always said that Steph Gingrich was the main character of like, strange true yeah. true colours. Cause it's like again, there's so much em there's so much emphasis placed on Steph. Like I know I know she's Deck Nine's creation and they really have a strong affinity, but are we not finding it a little bit strange here? Like how much like emphasis is put on Steph? Like I always say oh, this I it's know. like she clearly like clearly you get what i mean though when you when you read the end of the book i have like this inkling that now canonically speaking like because steph is in haven springs or haven haven springs am i right yes yes <laughs> okay uh by the way did you also enjoy it's like i got that haven springs and it's just the shape of an l i'm like nice yes <laughs> like <Nice>. um, <laughs> but at, when you got to the end, the fact that Steph is in Haven Springs means that canonically, destroying the bay is canonical now. Because, like, her journey starts with, like, the town being destroyed and her mom dying in the storm. And, like, it, it, it like, sets this trend where she has to, like, find meaning in life and she finds herself in Haven Springs. Would yeah. you not say, then, that, canonically speaking, that destroying the bay is now canonical well that that argument would be because like even with wavelengths you can pick two different outcomes where they try and like yeah. again play on that that side of the thing i mean their argument will be that they'll keep saying it's like this is one alternative possibility like they, they just don't yeah, they never like, they never like that's the thing it's like but because steph is there you know the way yeah. she got there you know what i mean i guess like she could have gotten there 
if the town yeah. wasn't destroyed. I guess she could. Yeah, this I don't is know. That's, that. Yeah, that's what they'll do. They'll never consider anything canon. There's no one it's considered so stupid, canon though. ending. So but but it is what it is because it's 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 hard for them to kind of like be definitive on which is the actual kind of like logical ending or whatever it's going to be. Like I think that's why I think most of the stories are built off the one where Arcadia Bay is destroyed because it, it sets up the future storylines. It sets up whatever else happens. Um, but yeah, I think like yeah, you, you do make a good point though. I think like but I think their argument will be like this is just a story in the universe and it's like it's just one of that yeah. possible hypothetical. They did it with like the same as Life is Strange co- comic series. Like whatever happens in that isn't canon. It's just a story in the Life is Strange universe. Yeah. So yeah, like, there's there's a lot to be said about um, Steph's story. Which one of the things I did like, and I don't know if you noticed it anyway, is like very early on um, they try and like they basically give Rosie for, for like infusion of everything. Where it's like True Color story, um, BTS story, Life is Strange one story. It's like trying to... comic story. Like they put yeah. um Pixie in it. Um they, they yeah. put that in it. Like it's just a mishmash of all life is strange, yeah. Which is why yeah, I said like, I they, think uh, Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, for it. sorry. No, no, good. I was just gonna say it's like it's it's it sounds like it's a love letter. Like Rosie Thor really does understand the Life is Strange universe. It sounds like she really loves the series. Um, but it also seems like at the same time, Square Enix like put it all in. Put it all in. Just yeah. put it all in. Um, so I think it's a mishmash of both. I think Rosie Thor understands it, and I think she was forced to understand it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I feel like when I was listening to it, and they, they mentioned Pixie, and I was like, oh, I was like, hello. I was like, I know who you are. Yes. And they obviously they mentioned the High Seas, which is the band that's in, in the comic series. I think, like, yeah, I think they were basically, maybe it was maybe it was on part of Square, where it's like, we need to infuse everything. They're just basically, like, pooling everything together. Don't nod, Deck Nine, Emma Vicelli, and kind of, like, just swirling around in a pot. And like making it mm-hmm. all fit into one thing. I think that, that that's like I think that's how I've always seen Square Enix's interpretation of the series, where it's like we want to make everything, you know, in one kind of complete storytelling kind of thing, rather than it just being Deck Nine, being Emma Vicelli, being Don't Nod, all separate entities. They kind of want to make everything combined. Um, mm. So I think like there was kind of like a lot of mission on Rosie for that to combine everything ever- together and make it the way that they wanted, and then also kind of like make her own story as well. I think that was an important part of it. Um, but yeah, it's just it, 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 it was as it, as I said, like that was just like one part. I mean, I like the fact that they went down the comics and mentioned those. I like the fact that I had like a kind of a moment where it's like, um, where Steph mentions that she meets Max, and it's like, hello, yes. it's like, yeah, it's like that's like a really nice, like that was like a because, like, again, that for me has always been like some of my favorite moments. I, I love when I spoke to Emma Vicelli and we were talking. And I said to her, I was like, I was like, how did it feel making scenes between Rachel and, and Max? I was like, we've never seen that in this in the series. It's like that that you you currently have source material for Chloe and Max to draw upon easy. But it's like there's there's really for me the moment where I was turning the pages and seeing scenes between uh Max in a frame with Rachel, and it's just them two talking. It's like all we have is that Chloe is a conduit that brings these two characters together. It's like we don't know what their kind of personalities are, whatever else. And that's what it felt like when you hear the mention of like, oh, you know, I met, you know, I, you know, I kind of like met with Chloe again and blah, blah. And it's like, and I met her, her, you know, her, her friend, yeah. uh, Max. And it's like, it's like, oh, and it's like, actually, this is the first time we have Steph meeting Max. So it kind of like yeah. fits like little things together. Um, so I was kind of like a big fan of like those kind of like moments <laughs> kind of like added to the, the, as you said, like it's, this is only one kind of like um story being told in life is strange stories but it's bringing characters together it like creates that kind of like your imagination flows at that point like this is actually really cool um see that in the story um but generally speaking yeah it was it was it was an interesting experience like you know rosie ford does have good taste as well like you know i I heard paramore being mentioned in there as one of the bands and like a couple other bands as well so i was like like, you know rosie ford has very good taste in music um oh yeah but yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a very um it's a very heavy story. I think like I think those kind of like obviously I feel like from what I can tell is that Rosie Four really wanted to talk about the trans stuff with um Izzy a lot more towards the end in terms of like this kind of conversation about depression, about kind of like um fer- um I think the therapy that um Izzy goes through and like kind of like when she was um going through gender reassignment as well so it's kind of like there's there's kind of like contextual kind of things i think that young people and i don't speak for anyone i'm just kind of like basing off what i've seen and heard and everything else like is what young people go through when they try and transition um 
So I think like it, it was kind of heavy as well, like kind of listening to it. I'm I'm not someone who's never experienced it, but it was just kind of like interesting to hear it and seeing like yeah. what the kind of processes are. Kind of like it I think like it was trying to create that kind of resonance as well. It's like giving you first hand experiences or like kind of try oh try it, sorry, like sorry, try to um project first hand experiences to you, if anything. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. No, it's um it's definitely, like I said, the messaging is in there, and I think it's the messaging for people going through it, you know, and I, I think it's like, and I was, and, and, and it's just, um, it's really interesting to read, you know, from our perspective, you know? Yeah, like, I think like, right, so like, my theory is this, and I have to kind of put this out there, I think like, the emphasis on like, Izzy to actually be in the game at this point is more emphasized in the book, if anything, like, she's only mm -hmm. in the game by passing mm -hmm. mentions and it's like references like i think like when you click on the bottle cap in 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 true colors or something like you know those like those trigger sequence memories where it gives you kind of a flashback kind of thing yes it did that and i've always argued that there's there's a big thing with this game as well i've never played the chinese version of true colors i want to play it because i feel like that stuff is cut just off my yes. base of my presumption because like it's hard to sell a game with a trans character or anything else in there um i think it's just almost like we've only ever seen it once really in a video game, which is mm -hmm. like, um, uh, tell me why. And that was because Microsoft took a big punt on don't nod. And basically we're like, you know, what, we'll do it. We're going to publish this game. There's no, there's no kind of risk in markets. It's not going to sell because there's a trans character in there. I feel like this right. is the first time where we get a full explanation of the story. Cause if you didn't know it, then you just know that Izzy had a relationship with staff. They were kind of close and that, that this has happened and that's it. This is the full expose of it. I think that, mm. that this is the only time you're ever going to get that with Izzy because it's hard for them to put it into a game because like, look at, for example, with True Colors. True Colors wasn't just immune to like a lot of things. One of the big things it was really caught on was um, the Tibet flag. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. I True remember Colors, that. like the, yeah. the yeah. And they, and they changed it eventually, which I didn't like that they changed it. They should have just kept it there because it's like, I don't agree with that kind of like way of handling things because they're getting review bombed on, I think it was like Steam or something. But yeah. Um, I, I I feel like that there was kind of conversations with it just in terms of like the kind of like heavy handing of like doing something like this because like it's hard for like a lot of video game developers to put trans characters in their games because they go to markets that are in the Middle East, they go to markets in Russia, into um, you know X country, Y country, and trans people are seen and vilified in different ways from people. So I think that this was kind of like a, a truly kind of expose that you could have on 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 this kind of like character is he if anything in terms of like the trans stuff the relationships and i think like it gave rosie for a lot of room to kind of explore what she wanted to explore in that no i agree it's just um i i think because like they weren't worried about the sales of a book rather than sales of a game yeah. um oops uh camera but like uh <laughs> i i think it gave a lot of freedom to really write out what they wanted to do in this game yeah, and it gave them the freedom to be like, oh, which is why, again, like why a lot of independent artists, whether it be musicians, book writers, uh, movie, like like anything, like there's a lot, there's a lot of nuance behind like indie titles because they have the freedom to be nuanced and more fleshed out and uh, hitting themes that uh, normally mainstream can't because they're worried about money. Yeah, you know, but you know, with indie artists. You can just like oh the cat the cat is like staring at you right now. Yeah, he's a, he's you'll you'll do his little hand movement in a minute. You'll see it. You'll yeah. want to come over here. I was just like oh that that cat wants to be in a lap right now. Um, no, yeah, <laughs> this is this is his like new little thing now. Watch, he'll like move his hand forward and try and like get my attention. But jeez, yeah, for the audio um, listeners, you are... there we go. Let's oh, see. There we I go. Can't, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> right, continue on. He's coming. Yeah. Out he, he literally like just like come on man <laughs> um yeah so uh no it, it's really cool that like it was really fleshed out uh especially for characters that needed to be fleshed out you know that weren't yeah mm -hmm. but uh yeah, it, what it, other it, what, what were some other thoughts that you had about this yeah it's like uh, my advice to anyone would be to enjoy it in terms of like do it over a long period of time. Don't do what I did, which was basically an eight hour binge. Yeah. It's heavy. Like, and, and yeah, and, and, it's, and, and, it's pretty good. <laughs> dude. Like it's, it's really like some deep depth thing. Like I haven't 
been disinvested in a life exchange story since life exchange 2 probably yeah yeah like it gives you a lot of time with steph it gives you i, I feel like i i felt by the end of it i felt complete with steph like everything that like every yes. little nook and cranny that was kind of like covered with it i like the fact that they explored the relationship with her mom a lot more because that's yes. a big big thing that, that she loses her mom but it's like that's kind of like we've a bit of a juxtaposition on the life of strange series because it's always been like the fatherly figure is gone it's like then we deal with with the female character or the male character dealing with the grief of losing their father but this was kind of more on steph losing her mom if anything so i think like that i really enjoyed with that dynamic it kind of gave a lot more exposition to steph it kind of like was a little bit of a flip on what the series traditionally does or, or what we call part of the the life of strange dna if anything um yes so i really enjoyed that and then, yeah, generally speaking, like I, I, my, my recommendation to people is like, listen to it in, in blocks. Don't listen to it in eight hours flat like I did because it's it's a lot. I was like, I was like convinced at one point Katie was in the room with me. That that's how much I was like listening to it. It's like it's like it's a lot mm-hmm. to take in. And I think you need your your imagination to kind of run a little bit wild with it. But generally speaking, I think like I I, I enjoyed it for what it was. I think maybe if my criticism is going to be there, and I, I I don't know how to really critique books because I'm not really a book kind of person. Um, maybe a little bit shorter, if anything. I think you could probably, probably whittle out one or two little bits here and there just to kind of refine the pacing of it. Kind of like picks up yeah. a little bit and it goes fast, slow, back and forth. And I'm a bit like, I'm like, this couldn't be whittled down a little bit, I think, in parts. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really, I don't really know if I had that much. Of, like, <laughs> one of the things I will say, actually, that you now mentioned it was when you said, when it gets a little bit raunchy and i'm like yes. oh boy i'm like oh boy. Yeah. and obviously and this is not a dick in criticism because it is a young adult novel it's a prose novel. it's a young it's, adult it's like, everybody's like they want the love story and it is it's there and it's not like it's not like grotesque or anything it's not like no it's not 50 shades it, gray no it's not 50 shades no gray. like no it's, it's just kind of like oh and, and 50, boy and 50, and, and 50 sh- and, let, and let me just put that as a 50 shades of gray is not grotesque either it's just poor writing it's not even it's yes. not even smart it's like yeah it's like it's not it's not grotesque and that's just really poor writing but it's like yeah it was like i was like listening to it at some point so it's like and it's like i'm just like oh it's like again like cleaning my room out or something it's like it's like katie's just like narrating it's like it's getting hot and heavy i'm like i'm like, I'm like hello <laughs> i'm like i'm like what hello? like what's going on yeah. here um mm-hmm. So yeah, it, as you said, it's funny that you mentioned that because it's like I remember like walking down. I was when I was in the coffee shop. One of the moments it started getting a little bit hot and heavy, and I'm like, hmm. I'm like, maybe I should yeah. stop listening to this whilst I whilst I get my coffee, and then I can like resume it on the way out. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really liked the exploration with her dad, um, Steph. I really liked the stuff about her mom. Um, the Izzy stuff was really deep as well. Um, I do wonder how much it must have like taken on toll on Katie doing all these sessions because you know there's, there's that one sequence in there where it's like, it's like Gabe Chen Gabe Chen ninety six messages her it's like Steph yes. writes back and it's like she keeps and she keeps doing it it's like I'm like bloody I'm like how much is like, this must be taking its toll on her right now I know she's narrating it that well because um, she has to at that but, point you know yeah I'll let you take yeah. over here as well because I'm gonna let this guy out first yeah no it's um. That, that's the thing. I, I think this is a really well-read story. I think Katie Benz really did her part into making it an enjoyable listen. I think Rosie Thor really did um, like have this love for a Life is Strange universe, and she put it out there. Whether or not she hit some checklist or not, um, it is what it is. But yeah, no, it's a, I, I think it's a well-thought-out young adult and I need to specify that it's a well thought out young adult novel. It's not, we're not the market for this, but no. for, for the young adult market, I think it's a well fleshed out story. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm generally struggling to find any critiques on it. Like stuff that I, that I wanted to see. I feel like that's now <laughs> Steph is like the, pro, I, I, the argument now at this point is like Steph's the most complete character in the entire series. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree because like we have a lot on her now. Like we have, we have like a whole novel and it, it covers a lot. And it, and, it, and it did enjoy how it, it made uh, both Steph and Izzy, both of them were the toxic ones in a relationship. Like both yeah. of them were not good for each other. And it was so well put out that like you got personalities from both and you got to find out why Steph was toxic for that relationship too. Like both of them yeah. were in the wrong. You know, I like that. I like that it keeps that tone as well. I've always had that. Do you know, we had that conversation with like a lot of the actors, and we always said like, who do you think is more toxic between Max, Chloe, and Rachel? Yeah. It's like are any of them toxic or not? Because like every single relationship in the series has always been fundamentally toxic, hasn't it? Because each person's yes. 
each person's way of like the way that they act what they do that's the kind of like benchmark of it that's why i've always had the argument it's like it's like, it's like when you were saying to me when you're like um when i was like you know chloe price isn't that likable you're like well she's not likable i'm like well yeah it's like can you not see why she isn't likable yeah right it's like Jeez. i can see why she is likable i can also see why she isn't likable same with max as well same with rachel same with like uh steph now as well like i, I feel like with a lot of characters you can see why they are liked by a lot of people then also utterly despised by other people because it's quite open to that so it's quite nice. i think she handled it really well if anything i think like more or less most of this what i was reading in the or listening to in the um in the prose novels seemed to be handled really well the only thing that i had with it was just kind of like the the sinking feeling of regret that they just didn't do more of this back in 2015 they could have just continued this through because i don't know how much this is really going to sell if anything and i think they're going to mm. basically be willing to take a bit of a, a hit in terms of like it's not massive, but we can kind of basically just branch out into the books, not books department. We can kind of like potentially get a little bit of like revenue and royalties and et cetera from on the, uh, on the audio side of things. But I think like there's just, there's just, it was so much lost potential a little bit with this. Like this could have oh, gone on for yeah. like years now. It's it just, it's set up for it, isn't it? It's so set up yeah. for it. Um, and I feel like you could easily have had like someone like Rosie Ford basically have done like five of these books up to now, like just on all the other different characters. Um, a bit of a big shame that but nonetheless still um still nice to see Steph get this kind of like full story on board and yeah i would recommend it to a lot of people i think if you're a fan of the yeah. series i think you'll just enjoy it my, my kind of as i said my, my main thing is just to sit down listen to it at your own pace kind of like really enjoy all the references you get all the references from bts and from uh true colors and from the novels and from the first life is strange and then also kind of like just really have a lot of appreciation from it um because obviously like the dream for me like i i it doesn't work but i'd love to have had like dream of the scenes where gabe comes in and it's like basically then it's han so speaking mm. and it's like then you basically yeah. if any other character comes in it's like that person speaking but obviously that's not the the point of an audiobook the audiobook is just mm -hmm. a narrator who's doing it which is obviously katie in this case and katie's perfectly fine i, I just mean it would have like helped things a little bit more in terms of like um for me personally because i can't really see much of that it's just like i was just listening to katie's voice throughout the entire film but yeah really enjoyed it and obviously i think again katie was great i think katie's really just she's just she's just in her own league at this point now oh yeah for sure yeah well i'm glad you enjoyed yeah. it though okay so we're moving to spread the arts now um want me to kick things off yeah kick things off for us well i'm gonna beat you to the punch here so my spread of the arts is to go and read and listen to Life is Strange, Steph's story. That is my oh, spread of the arts. Really? <laughs> Actually. Yeah, well, I think, like, I, yeah, well, I think, like, my, I could have picked other things, but I want people to go and do it because I want people to support it. And it's, it's Life is Strange, it's Katie Benz, uh, you know, it's Rosie Four. I want people to go and, like, actually spend a bit of time with this because I think, like, for me, it was an opening experience because I've never really done anything like this. It's been, like, a long time since I've read a book, being honest, as well, which is to my own detriment. And then also audiobook as well and i think like audible's kind of changed my mind a little bit this is not a sponsorship or audible but it's like i'm kind of like keen on maybe even trying one more time and see if i actually want to listen to more books and stuff because it's like actually quite nice and a little bit stress relieving if anything so my kind of recommendation is just straight up go and try uh steph's story i think like it just gives you if you're if you played the games and it gives you a bit more expanded universe kind of vibes because i think if you listen to this you might enjoy it you might go and read the comics or you might go and um you might go and pick up the book and it might help support this kind of like this uh this um first prose novel they've ever done for the series so yeah my recommendation is steph's story might be cheap mm. uh, in terms of like pulling this one out first but i'm gonna i'm gonna take it because you let me go first that's why you never let yeah, me go first sure. uh what else what else have you watched this week or have you have it has it just been steph's story uh it's just that literally i've been watching south park <laughs> fair enough it's like fair a very enough. simple man so it's like yeah it's gonna be the pros novel of this one <laughs> yeah um so i'm just going to uh do a quick plug about my stuff uh i have a new ep for cast garden coming out may 26th i'm very proud of it i'm very happy with it but it's going to come out before the next episode drops so may 26th it's going to be on spotify itunes and all that so uh fueled by friendship it's going to be the ep title by cast garden um you know save it to your calendars but it's it's going to be up uh but my spread the arts okay it's going to be an interesting one it's interesting because 
I haven't even played yet, but many people have, um, many people have recommended to me, and I'm going to be playing it once I'm done writing the EP. Like I, I just I'm too focused right now on ma mixing, mastering, writing the last bits. So, um, Inscription. Everybody has been telling me to play Inscription. It's an interesting one because I haven't played it. I will say I finished the quarry. I did finish the quarry. It's good. I don't know if it's worth like uh, the full price point. It is very yeah. short in my opinion. But if you liked Until Dawn, you'll love this. Um, it has no connection to Until Dawn. It doesn't even reference it. It is beat for beat Until Dawn, uh, just in a new setting. You know, it is what it is. But I think it was good. But in terms of inscription, I've heard nothing but good things. Um, I've had a chef, one of my fellow chefs, tell me that, oh, play inscription. I had a comedian tell me, oh, play inscription. I've had, like, other random people tell me, like, oh, inscription's really good. I'm like, okay. So what I've heard about inscription, it's on Switch, it's on Xbox, it's on PlayStation. It's a card-based game. It's like, um, it's like, um, like, it is cards and it's deck building and all that. But it has mm -hmm. weird twists along the way. It's very interesting. The comedian that told me about it said he doesn't like video games anymore. Like, it doesn't interest him. But it is so innovative for what it does that you think that you know where it's going. And it takes a complete left turn. So I'm excited to start playing Inscription. I really am. So it's interesting for me to say that Spread the Arts is something I haven't played yet. But so many people have recommended me this game that I am fully intending on playing it once I'm done mixing and mastering and uploading the EP, which is going to be pretty soon. And then the, the distributor does its thing. But yeah, Inscription. I'm going to get it on Nintendo Switch. So it's it sounds pretty juicy and pretty innovative for what video games can be. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds very good pick that. And Quarry is a really interesting thing that you mentioned as well. I, I remember reading reviews at the time saying it's a little bit short in terms of it pacing. Um, in terms of it's it was like short. Overall. I was surprised. Like I got to the end, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. I was like, but it was short. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but either way, you can pick up, pick up, uh, pick it up. Sorry, pretty cheap now. So it's like it's not really, yeah, not much of a. Yeah, it's always on sale. It. Pick it up when it's on yeah. sale. You know, it's good. Yeah, I. I will, I will. I'm going to pick up at some point soon. But yeah, that that will be it for this podcast. I hope you enjoyed. If you have listened to Steph's story, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, and yeah, you know, as I said, what do you enjoy? What didn't you enjoy? Let us know. Um, if anything we missed out, it's nice to hear other people's opinions. So either way, we are at the end. As always, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, if you have reached here, uh, please do consider dropping us a subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video, and share with your friends. It helps you keep up to date with our content, helps you support the channel, and also Strangecast is available on all podcast services as well, so you can follow us on there as well. You can download the episodes as well. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Um, I don't know my life after Strange is coming back. We obviously had Dylan Winfrey. For, for Dylan Winfrey? Dylan Winfrey? No, we didn't have Dylan Winfrey. Hmm. Trey Hutch we had. <laughs> we oh. had Trey Hutch for the last one. Yeah, so we had um, we had Trey Hutch for the last uh, episode, yeah. so do check that out as well. I thought you were saying um, a, I thought you were saying a future episode. I was like, oh, oh, oh I will really? actually I should wait Dylan I should I wait Dylan Winfrey back on to talk about True Colors, but never never managed to get that on. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, um, can get in touch with him. But I'm yeah, double last downing on the Trey. Trey Hutch interview. Like that that was a good interview. <laughs> like I, I think people need to watch that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah that's the last, that's the last most recent one. So it's, it's, I haven't got anything planned at the minute. I have had an interesting DM. So hopefully this interview does go ahead. It'll just take some time to get off the ground. But hopefully it has actually happened. So stay tuned. Maybe some more stuff comes that. But either way, until then, stay tuned. There'll be more strange casts to come in the future. Take care, guys. See you later. Yes, sir. See you later.